Bro, if so many people spent more, as much time as they did on their businesses as they did their relationships, their life would be incredibly better. You know what Say I'm, that again. You dude. know what I'm saying? Say that again. And again, it's like, I love, I love working. I yes. love, yes. I, I love, I love what I do. I, I love writing. I love creating. I love helping people with their, their fitness and talking to other coaches and things. But it's like, there is so much more. You're one of my favorite people on the planet. So I'm so happy you're on this podcast right now. Thank you, man. Because I really mean that. Like when I see you, I always just feel such a level of excitement for life, energy, just wisdom, peace, guidance, presence. Like that's what I think of you when I see you and whenever I get the opportunity to just randomly bump into you at the gym. Yeah. Just feel so good being in your presence. I appreciate that. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> start off with making me, te- making me tear up dude holy shit no it's because um yeah thank you for that i think it's i think it's because i know how genuine you are and i know how like you i know you love lots of people but also how have you said that and um yeah the, the thoughtfulness behind it and our relationship over the past two years or so has been very meaningful for me as well. And with male friendships in particular, it's something that I was telling one of my good friends who I'm starting to get closer with, like there's fewer things more important to me than building depth within my inner circle with quality people. Um, And especially now that I'm in Austin and you're in Austin and I have a lot of other very close friends here, it's like building roots is something that's very important to me. And so having someone like you in my life is, yeah, it's very important to me. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for being in my life as well. And don't worry, we can get tissues out if you No, nah, dude, I'm, listen, I, it's, it's, that's hilarious that it happened so quickly, <laughs> but I think with the meditation and just, yeah, the, the good energy that you bring out of me, I think is something very special. And so that's how quickly that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. And of course, w- what, why is why are male friendships so important to you specifically? I think um to be a hundred percent honest to, to get right into it. Um I grew up so I'm I'm from Kentucky. I had I, I still have the most incredible family. Um my mom and dad are amazing, amazing brother and sister, um, endless love, right, with them. But with my dad, he was much more lead by example role model type. Um, my mom is a saint and always plenty of physical touch and, and showering. And again, this it's not that my my dad didn't give me tons of affection and things. It's it's more so like he showed loves in he showed love in another way, acts of service and um quality time and just being very silly. And again, I, I look up to my dad in many ways, but as far as the actual physical touch and getting very deep and vulnerable with each other. Like we didn't have tons of, we haven't had tons of deep talks and, um, you know, uh, uh, again, like the, yeah, the, the physical touch side of things. And it's also the same thing with my older brother. I'm very close with him, look up to him in so many ways, but whenever I first came to Austin from Kentucky, again, they're going to be a, a decent contrast in types of living and um, just lifestyles there. Again, not better or worse, just different. And whenever I came to Austin and hung out with a, a few of the people in my community that I have here now, uh, male friendships were very much prioritized and taken seriously. And I have a lot of like older friends too. So I'm 30 and, uh, you know, one of my oldest friends is like 42. And so hanging out with, them and seeing how they interact with each other and you know they're successful good men have great relationships good people in general and i was like oh these are very good role models for me in many ways but also they are holding hands at parties and like cuddling with each other and the big burly guys tattoos everything i'm just like oh this is different i was like this is very different and so as I got to hang out with them more and things and 
as I had my first opportunity to have a cuddle puddle or something or like cuddle with guys or give hugs that weren't ended after a quick, it wasn't a side hug right. or it wasn't something that was super quick. It's like, no, we're going to sit in this for a second. I was like, Ooh, this is something that, um, I, I, you know, I had a very happy life before, but it's something that I didn't necessarily know was available. And it's something that I didn't know how much I would get out of it whenever I did have it. And so now I've really leaned into that, especially doing that for other men as well. Yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds like the thing that you lacked was like emotional support Mm -hmm. from a male role model. Yeah. Like also in a different dynamic than my father as well, like in a, in a kind of a, a separate way, but it's, it's also been the same with the platonic girlfriends that I've made as well. You know, I've, I had some, I still do have some platonic friends in girlfriends in Kentucky back home. And, but here in Austin, again, there's just, at least within my friend group, there's a, we take relationships very seriously, right? It's kind of like, if we're going to be friends, like we're going to really be friends and we really want to put in the work and you have to really show up for each other. Um, and it's just like, that has given me access to different levels of support and, um, mentorship and, you know, uh, just being able to bounce ideas off of, of, of a woman's brain is, is going to be different. Um, but it's kind of like, collectively it only lifts you so much higher uh and so yeah luckily again both on the male and the the female side it's just been it's been overwhelmingly good and helpful and a positive influence on my life yeah it, it's it's like there's a level of openness yeah here yeah that i haven't experienced anywhere else yeah where people are just more comfortable looking at themselves and asking themselves, what are the things that are activating me in this moment? And why does when this person does this, that makes me act and show up in a different way. And it's like, when I was living in New York, all of that stuff would get brushed under the table. And it's like, if you feel, if you feel upset by what Sally says, you just go to a different person and tell that person, another person who's not unrelated to the situation, what you think of that person. Yeah. And it's like here, from what I've experienced, Mm -hmm. and we're we're talking about friend groups of different people. Yes, but we've experienced the same thing. There's like a level of, okay, you upset me when you said this, and this is what it means about my childhood, and Mm -hmm. this is where I'm coming from. It's like that is a, yeah, that's a rare thing. But we are both living in that reality, and I stand for that for all humans to have that reality. I it's it's because it's it it demands authenticity and it also demands respect with each other right because it's like you i'm only going to speak up about something that you said because one i care and of course like the delivery also is very important but most of the time if somebody said something that offended to you or something it can it can be approached with curiosity and love and typically people are able to articulate their, their feelings and and tell you exactly how they felt. And they want to use it as a place of growth and be like, I like you. I, you said this, it made me feel this way. How can we continue to build our bond actually even closer and, and become closer friends? And my friend, John Romanello actually said this about the puppy love stage within, um, Uh, romantic relationships, but also within platonic relationships is like, you don't exit the puppy love phase of a relationship until something happens that could end the relationship Mm. and then you work past it. Right. I think that that's a, that's a big deal. And I think a lot of people here, uh, which I think can come from this emotional intelligence and um, kind of more open heartedness, like people are, they want to lean in to that. And especially like if if it is a relationship that you want to deepen, it's like, let's lean into this because this is an opportunity for growth. And it's like, we can, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good. This can, this can offend me and make me have these emotions and things, but also this is a learning moment for me. 
this is a learning moment for you and this is a learning moment for us, right? And I think that that's, again, it's just like that that feeling of connection and like, cool, I'm on your team. That feeling is, it's everything, you know? It's it's so, it's so, um, it, it helps my growth in so many ways and it helps my view on humanity in so many ways. I'm like, this is available. It is, and it's worth it. And it can take work and it can take some uncomfortable feelings, but going and talking behind somebody's back is not helping anybody. Or and, just stuffing it away. Yeah. Or stuffing it away. Cause it's, you're stuffing it away for now. Right. But it's going to show up in, in plenty of other ways. So yeah. And I know you're huge on this too. Like just telling the truth and, and living in that truth is, it sounds, it's so simple, but also it is, it's, it can be very difficult for people. And I think it's typically related to, to, to ego or people pleasing or whatever it is, a lot of these invisible scripts or conditioning or whatever it is, you know, whatever you want to call environmental that can prevent people from feeling safe enough to do that, or even able to articulate their thoughts and emotions accurately enough to have a productive conversation around that very difficult thing, right? There's so much that it's hard. It takes, it takes, it can take time, but the willingness and awareness is a big starting point, like the, the willingness to, to do it and the awareness of, oh, this is, will be beneficial for me if I take a step forward in this other direction and try and face these and I embrace this and this person isn't trying to get me or anything, you know, or they're not trying to call me out or, um, you know, make me feel stupid or something like that. It's like, no, 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 like, let's, let's dive into this for, for both of us. And then you come through the other end and it makes everything better. Yeah. yeah. Th this is the creation of what I think is like a, a new type of man mm. almost Yeah, where there was never any man who was comfortable with his emotions mm -hmm. and able to dive into them in a way that was helpful for everyone when we were growing up as a Hollywood character didn't exist. Mm -hmm. I can't think of one. No. And it's like, I see that happening more and more and us going down this place of like, you can understand your emotions and you can understand how to communicate effectively. And that doesn't make you less of a man. No. In fact, that makes you more of a man. 100%. So it, yeah. it, it's a compassion and empathy and open heartedness and all of these quote unquote, traditionally like feminine qualities are absolutely a strength. Like after you, because also acting from this is, this is, this is a topic. Yeah. That I actually love getting into because I have a lot of friends who are, um, have very traumatic backgrounds and, and have, uh, a lot of hardships that they have persevered through and they've been very resilient and it's very admirable about how they've, they've pushed through all of that and gotten to where they are now. But a lot of their motivations and what drives them could be like a chip on their shoulder or trying to prove something to their parents or that teacher, or, you know, they had to, it, it, it's a lot based around fear and um, it, it's, it's, it's based around fear and, and like, yeah, uh, proving yourself or, or something, which is still essentially fear and like ego. And of course that can all kind of go into it. And I, I try to present to them. It's like, because what they think is that's their edge. And that is, that's what has gotten them, at least what they perceive in that, their mind. Like, this is what I needed to do to get to where I am. And this has been such a valuable tool for me. And it's been so helpful up to this point. It's like offering anything else is, you know, such a, it's so scary, right? It's so scary to lose this part of your identity and things that, um, Honestly, it's still serving you, but it might not be serving you in all the ways, or you could potentially like what I, and I feel like you as well is, is serving from a place of love, like mm -hmm. coming from a, a, a foundation of, of love and more so it's, it's, it's like a place of encouragement, a self of self-encouragement over cracking the whip mm. and like using fear and using, you know, belittlement or self-loathing or any of those things. It's, it's, it's that subtle shift 
into, you know, even if you think of a dad or a coach or anybody being like, come on, come on, Danny, like you can do it. Like you're, you're good at this. You're smart. You've been through hardship before. Like, let's, let's keep it going versus, oh, see, you always do this. Like you're, you're, you're better than this. Like you, you can, you can do so much better than this. Like all all these, all these fear-based kind of like ego driven, I'm going to shame is the word that I'm looking for. A Mm -hmm. lot of shaming. And Again, it's like you can also think like whose voice is that in your head that is is telling you that. But I and so what I'm getting at is they they think that without their edge, without using that fear, without that shame, they're not going to be able to act as intensely or they're not going to be as driven or as ambitious or anything. And I'm like, honestly, maybe I don't I like maybe. But also, what if you could be at least just as ambitious or driven and things coming from a place of love driving you right and it's like that that subtle shift of encouragement over shame or belittlement um is like i would i would argue you can you can be even more powerful from a place of love and and feeling good about yourself and encouraging yourself and it's like i i think that that is that is, it's, it's, it's one of the most powerful things. If you can harness it and then recognize how strong that can be, you know, as opposed to the, the fear side of things or the shame, because it's like, yes, that can be driving you forward, but I see it as almost running with a parachute on as opposed to having the wind at your back with love. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, absolutely. I think that's, and it's hard to it's hard to get that across because it's like, okay, even if you accept that, it's like, what are the next steps? Like, mm. what are you, like, cause you're, you're going to have to undercover, uncover potentially a lot of traumas or like a lot of, like I said, of visible scripts or stories you're telling yourself or these identities and labels and, and stuff again, stuff that served you and still serves you in some ways, but it's kind of like, how can we shed what isn't serving you anymore and potentially start building, um, a new scaffolding around your mindset and how you approach life. So what were the invisible scripts that you needed to undo to help get you into more love? Mm. That's good. Um, I think, uh, oh, it's more so, I think it, it came down to trusting myself more. Mm. I think it was giving myself evidence over time. I, 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 I feel like I've always, I've always had the gold retriever energy, you know, like this is just who I am. It's, it's always, um, it's always been who I am and in leading from a place of optimism and happiness and, and things like that. But I think, you know, especially as I do meet these other people who operate differently, or you have, you know, you have like a Rogan or you have a Jocko or a Goggins, or you have some of these um, more so like big time business leaders, even lots of athletes and things. And I'm just like, I don't operate like that. Like that's not a switch that I have and that's just not me. And so it was almost kind of this, am I, am I, you know, just like naively happy? Am I just like, is this, Am I, uh, you know, like, is, is this, is this coming from a place of shallowness, uh, or is this actually a, um, quote unquote, like proper way of, is this an acceptable way of living life? Like, is this, is this something that's more of like an illusion? Uh, yeah. Like a, a, a disillusion with me, or it's like, is this something that is a very strong foundation to actually carry out my life? And it's actually a big strength. And so I think over time, as I, um, you know, I set out to run my own business. I did that. I, you know, I moved to New York. I, I had different relationships. I, I've navigated a lot of difficult things, at least relative to my own experience. Um, and then as, especially in the relationship realm over the last couple of years, coming into contact with a lot of I, I hate like labeling people as like high quality or like high value or something. It feels kind of icky to me. Sure. But just by saying that you kind of understand people, people that are 
dope, you know, like people who are really cool, like they, they're really like you, like having their shit together in many areas and you're, you're proud to be their friend and, um, like they're, they're doing really good stuff in their life for themselves and for other people. And they have a good track record and, um, even maybe they don't have the best track record from the past and then they've overcame that and became a new person and things. Right. It, it's kind of like after I, after I met quite a few new people and then I kept getting a consistent response on people meeting me yeah. and how impactful and the the kind things I think it's kind of kind of like as I teared up as you said that about me in the beginning it's like that is such um fuel for me it's such a again like I'm good yes I've got me yes but also getting that from other people that I look up to is very good confirmation and good affirmation of just like, cool. I don't think this is a fluke. Like, I don't think I'm just getting lucky. And I don't think that everybody that is meeting me and that likes me and things like they're all, you know, fucked up or something, or they're <laughs> just like joking or, or like, I'm, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop, which was a very real thing. At some point I was like, do these people actually like me? Or is this going to have, like, is this going to go away? Like, I'm just worried that I'm like, oh, this, this feels so good. And I'm like, is this, is this real? And well, I think, again, what was that? What was that period? Like, I think it, it was, it was, it, I had, you had to pay a lot of attention and you have to really get internal and self-aware with yourself. And I think if you're around the right people, I think that I can bring that up and I can say, this is what I'm feeling. And I can have these emotions and things. And again, they're not like, oh, you're showing weakness right now, right? We, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to hang out with anybody who's weak-minded or something or, or afraid that, you know, they, we, they need us or something, right? This codependency or something. Um, and I think that they, they just, they kept showing up mm. again. They, I kept showing up and they kept showing up and it's like that that just took some time and effort and trust again it just it comes down to trust and and really seeing how people respond in different situations and and things and seeing how you feel about that and again just because they act differently than how you would act you can still run that through your own checks and balances of value systems and being like cool this is uh, that's different than what I'm doing, but I, I still appreciate their outlook or I, I appreciate how they're, they're doing something or how they're relaying something to me. Um, and so, so yeah, it just, I think it, it came from speaking up if that was a feeling that I was having with particular people, having those hard conversations, um, and then consistently showing up for them and then also being very delighted and, uh, happy that they were showing up for me in that same way as well. But uh, it's, it's also it, the, the other underlying constant, which I saw you post about Ram Dass, like thing about working on yourself, yeah. like that was, that's always a constant underneath. But what's great is the other people are doing those same things. They're doing that too, right? Like working on themselves. And so that then allows everything that else that I was just referring to, you're able to receive that in the best way or you're able to do what you will with that information in the the most productive way because you're working on yourself internally and that doesn't mean that you're done or anything like that but it's more so like i know my strengths i know some of my weaknesses i can recognize these things and then navigate um and adjust appropriately from there yeah yeah, yeah. it it's so interesting because you have almost based your life around relationships and friendships in some way yeah. as like a training ground for like, you're a fitness coach. Yeah, like, I know. Right? I mean, we should have yeah. said yeah. that in the, in the jump, like this is an online fitness coach. Yeah. Dietitian. And, yeah. Dietitian. Yeah. And, you know, moved to Austin, Texas two years ago. Yeah. And it's like from that base of having your fitness dialed in and then helping other people with their fitness. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, okay, what about the relationship with myself? And then it was like, okay, what about the relationship with other people? Yeah. And that's where we both have found ourselves mm -hmm. at the almost exact same point. Yeah. It's like- <laughs> It's awesome. It's awesome. Like we want to learn about 
other people and learn about our relationship with them and how we're showing up and what it means and what's going on because that's just the next stage of our evolution. And yeah. maybe in the future, it'll be we'll both be dealing with a wife and maybe in the future, yeah. we'll both be dealing with children. And yeah. it's like, okay, like this is just the unfoldment. We happen to be at the same level right now. I, I, I think so. And I think, um, I think that it's funny with the fitness thing is that was my first tangible vehicle for total life transformation, yeah. right? Like the funny, too. the funny thing that I've said, and the thing that happens for lots of people is, is, is kind of like fitness can be the peanut butter and then full life transformation can be the medicine hidden inside the peanut butter that you give to a person. Right. So I was like, sure, come to me for a vanity goal of losing 20 pounds and getting abs and let me change your life. Right. It's kind of like that. It, it because, because what I just said about all these things of accepting yourself, self-awareness, a, a lot of the deep work, inner work and stuff that can sound like a lot. But if I'm like, Hey, go do three sets of 10 on bench press and make sure you keep the promises you make to yourself in the fitness and nutrition realm. It's like one, you're, you're doing that. You're keeping your word to yourself and also you're getting healthier. So it's just like, it's a positive reinforcement loop of kind of like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm feeling better. So I'm doing better. And then I'm feeling better because I'm doing better. And then I'm feeling better. So it's just a, it's a very, it's a, it's a very positive loop. Um, and so I think people can go through a fitness transformation first and, and they start to keep the promises they make to themselves. And that builds self-trust into their ability to do hard things because that ripples out into everything else because you're just building confidence in, in who you are. And whenever you set your mind to something that you know is good for you and it's, it's, it's aligned with your value system and you follow through on that, that feels good. And that is a stepping stone into continuously building on that. And that can, the other great thing is that it compounds and whenever fitness becomes a habit for a lot of people, it's also great because it beca- it's a pretty, after you get the snowball going, right? It's, it's much, it's, it's easier to, to kind of keep that positive reinforcement going. Um, and then I, I think that I just, I, I realized that I was good with fitness and I was interested. That was my, where my first curiosity took me. And then that led me to being a coach and if you're a coach, you understand that, yes, you're going to be a fitness coach. You're going to have to know about biology and physiology and biomechanics and all these different things that are absolutely necessary for a fitness coach to understand. But also you're within reason, you're going to have to play therapist, right? Mm. Because there's so much uh, behavior change that goes into it and identity and so much deep rooted talk about invisible scripts with food and your body and how you perceive yourself and things. It's like, there's a lot, I mean, emotional eating is so difficult to work through. And it's like, of course I have to start to understand people because this is why it's, it's like, it's funny whenever chat GPT came out, I remember back when I was single, I went on a date with a girl and she was asking me, she was like, are you worried about chat GPT? Cause it can just kind of like spit out a meal plan for people or anything. And I was like, there's been meal plans on the internet for a long time. I was like, do you see people following them though? I was like, there's a, there's a fitness and fitness can be such and nutrition can be such a emotional problem that you cannot use a logical solution to fix it right it's like these emotional things you know what to do but it's like uh, derek sivers said he said if he said if um if more information was the answer we'd all be billionaires with six-pack apps it's like Mm -hmm. we know what to do like there's so much that we know to do um and and so it's like it's it's the follow through and it's the adjusting through different life situations and everything, right? There's just so much more that, that goes into it. So it's kind of like, yeah, fitness was that first overarching life transformation and my ability to use what I was interested in and my gifts. And I was able to, to help, uh, other, other people with that. And so now I'm just on whatever evolution it is that I've built up over time, like sure, in the beginning, I was much more focused around learning about macros and periodization or 
compound lifts and things like that. And now it's, it's kind of like, no, I need to, I want to learn about why you care about what you do and why you want to do these things and what, why you you're having these feelings around wanting this goal. Like, why do you really want this goal? And like, mm-hmm. what will that give you? And this and this and this, and, um, going, going deeper with people. It's like, yeah, fitness, it just, it gives me the the vehicle for that. And I think I'm excited to explore potentially other evolutions with helping other coaches in the, in the business space or, uh, potentially as we've, we've talked about doing something like this in person for other men or even people in general. Like I just, I like this, this, the group settings so much. The group of, of helping people with their emotional Mm -hmm. intelligence and helping people understand themselves better is something that I would love to do with you. It's right. Like if you're interested in this and you're however many minutes into this podcast (laughs) and you're like, I want to hear these guys speak more. I want (laughs) to, I want them to help me understand myself to the level that they seem to understand themselves. Like hit me up on, on Instagram or Twitter, DM me and just type a, what, what, what word can we do? Just t- give me EQ. To there you go. EQ like to start the- EQ's great. And I'll, I'll respond to you on, on I, Twitter. I love that. And I love that. So, because it's, I mean, I want to give a personal example from this to really help give people the sense of how you help me. Oh, great. So, I was seeing this woman in November and- through our conversation, you were able to help me see that I just wanted to be with her because she was attractive. Mm. And I had this realization and I was able to let it go, Mm -hmm. let the situation go, let her go. And I felt so much peace. Well, you wanted, you wanted, well, you wanted to be with her because she was attractive and how that validating that was for you. Correct. And because I have also been in a similar situation where I'm like, wow, this girl is so beautiful, like one of the most beautiful girls I've ever been with. And like, this feels good for me inherently. And also, of course, I'm like, other people seeing me with this girl is also a big plus, right? Right. And it's, it's, it's that. And so, yeah, continue on. So you helped me realize that and helped me understand that I was coming from a place of scarcity mm. because if I let this girl go, I was scared and nervous that I would never be able to get with a girl this attractive again. Right. right. And you were like, you were able to point that out so clearly to me in a loving way that helped me understand where the wild part was I let it go the following day. And I said, I don't want to get with this girl anymore. I don't, I Mm. appreciate her as a person, but I let it go. Mm. And then two days later, she calls me on the phone is like, Hey, I don't think we should see each other anymore because I feel like you just want to get with me because I'm attractive. Sure. It's, and it was like... Isn't it funny how that subconscious comes through? Yes. Like in your uh, in your actions and words and things. And what that opens up for you is like you get to then see the next level. Mm-hmm. You get to see the potential in the future for the next woman to come into your life where you're not basing it on how attractive she is. Correct. And that is the power of the work that mm. we've done. It's, and, and it's so special. It really is. And it's better for both of you. It's better for you and it's better for that that woman too. Which, Absolutely. Which clearly she could she could feel it. And that's that's not fair to her. It's not it's not fair to you. And like it's 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 cool that you guys could talk about that amicably and in things. And it's like that's that's great. But yeah, I think that that's the that's the power of one telling the truth, but then also like seeking the truth, like searching for the truth and being open to that truth. Right. Because you could have told me that and I could be like, no, no, it's not true. I'm not coming from scarcity. I'm not like, sure. that could have been the response. Right. But that that openness is like, you have to, yeah, you have to be able to drop your ego. You have to be able to to really want to know the truth and understand that it's going to better serve you. Yes. It's going, it's, it's going to be better for you. Like it's, 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 you've got to get out of your own way and you have to, it's, it's tough though. It's tough because even having that awareness in the first place can be very difficult. And, you know, you might make up certain excuses again, you might push back and things, but it's like, I think after so many times of running your head into the wall, you're like, okay, maybe this is something that I need to adjust and go the other way. Yeah. Right. And if you've let go enough times 
of your own ego, Correct. you understand this is like sets and reps at the gym. I've let go of so much of the ways in which I thought it would be or the ways. And it's like every time I've done that, I've gotten deeper into deeper into truth. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like, it's think that's what meditation is at some point, right? It's kind of like meditation is not just like sitting there with your eyes closed and simply just thinking about your breath. It's it's being able to take that mental training into these other real life situations where you're like, oh, I'm having, I'm having these intense emotions and being able to sit in that and, and really, again, it's not detaching from it necessarily. It's a place of understanding. There's a, there's a really uh, good book that I love called Already Free. It's by Bruce Tiff. And he's a psychotherapist who also uses Buddhist practices. And he explains using the body as a crucible. And so like a, a crucible, which is typically holding, it's hard to explain, but it holds like, it can hold very hot things. It can hold like lava inside it, right? And it just, the container continuously gets hotter and hotter, but like it doesn't break or anything. It just continues to hold this high amount of heat. And so thinking of your body as a crucible, whenever you have these very intense, overwhelming emotions that can come over you, like instead of resisting it or struggling it or pushing it away, it's just like sitting in that and your body just becomes this furnace almost of feeling all these emotions coming through you. And it's, it's kind of like with, with mindfulness too, often or with meditation, you can come from a place of curiosity. And so it's like, whenever you have, you can, both things can happen at the same time. You can have these very overwhelming, intense sensations and also look into it with curiosity at the same time. And I think that that is, that's reps that you're putting in with meditation every single morning. And then whenever this manifests itself in real life, it is, I tell my girlfriend all the time, I was like, mindfulness is like a cheat code. It's a cheat code. Yeah. It, it just, it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean you're not going to have any other problems or anything like that. It's just like, it's, it's how you relate to experiences. And this is actually what the already free book is about. Um, at least how he approaches as a psychotherapist, his approach is the developmental side and then the fruitional side. And so the developmental side of the practice is typical psychotherapy, um, more so uncovering stuff from the past and working through trauma and, and working through all of these different stories and things, and also giving you the action steps in like, you need to go to the gym. You need to keep your word to yourself. You need to follow through with your work assignments, like all of these things, like the actual doing of your experience that will make your life better. And then the fruitional side is the Buddhist practice in how you relate to those tasks that you're doing, right? So to bring it full circle back to the beginning where I was talking about how I operate from a place of love in doing things and working from a place of values and that pushes me forward and how I can have other friends who operate from a place of fear or shame or something. It's like, let's say we're, we're both doing on paper, the same tasks, right? One, two, three, four, every task that we're doing is the same, but our motivations and how we relate to the experience of doing those things, that is where meditation and mindfulness and all of these mental practices can help you understand that that experience of doing those things is workable. And that is something that if you're somebody who has always labeled yourself as something, or you've always thought, oh, I, I always do it. I always do this. You know, I, I, the, these things are kind of ingrained in me. You have these labels and it's like, I'm, I am this, or I always do this and things. Whenever that person under can somehow come around to un, like come around, practice mindfulness, do all the work, all these things. Once they can figure out that their that experience that they've always felt is workable, mm. it's like it's such a revelation. Like I've seen it because they're like, oh, this gives me hope that you know it's not like a oh I'm just I'm fixed now. Like my now I I can 
see more clearly or things. It's more so just like, oh, I know that I often do this thing, but I also have the power to change that, right? It's not always ingrained, right? It's not always this or that and things. And I think that that is, that's, that's one of the most beautiful things. And I think like with you and I, that's some really good work that we could blend together with helping people uncover lots of the stuff. Um, again, I'm not trying to replace therapists or anything like that. I still think that that's very important, but as far as how we can help people in the best way possible of doing both that developmental side and the the relation to that experience. Um, I think that that's huge. And last thing I'll say on this is we, <laughs> we care, <laughs> bro. Like that's, that's one of the biggest cheat codes. It's just like, we actually give a fuck. Like yeah. we really do care about these other people. Um, and that is the, that's the, some people just need people to believe in them. Yes. They just be, need to be, they need that encouragement. They need to be like, what if you looked at it like this? What if you, and, and again, the delivery of that is huge and how you can um, make these people feel safe and give them a, you know, objective and, like, or or help them arrive at their own answer, but, or yeah, give them an objective uh, task or something like that, but do it from a place of, hey, this would be good for you as opposed to, judgment or like you know i'm so good at this you should do it this way or whatever right like that type of teaching it's just like no we're on your team like we want this is let's let's do this together yeah and yeah i think that that's that's huge so i'm stoked for that yeah i i i, I think it's it's like one realization i made recently is that people you can only get to the level of the therapist that the therapist is at themselves yeah it's very true and so if we're coming from love yeah or peace, or joy. It's like the people that are being guided along that journey can also get to that place. Correct. But if the person is coming from uh, reason mm -hmm. or or uh, hopefulness, it's mm -hmm. like the the person who is being guided can only get to that place as well. Yeah, and I think it's it's not an or; it's an and, right? It's like do therapy. Yes. And also come I, hang with out you. with us I'm with and you. go to the gym and yeah. journal yourself, you know, and do meditation. It's like, let's do all of it. Let's, let's, let's crush all of it because I think, yeah, there's, uh, there's, you never know how your perception or how you say something or also the, something that's not talked about enough is the reps of actually the the repeated exposure of hearing what you need to hear because you can hear a message once and it not hit but then somebody says the same thing with a, 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 in a different way or even the same way but it's a different day for you and you have a different mindset or something and it just hits and it relates to your life in a specific context right. where you're like i've heard that seven times but the fact that you said it in this way like you've heard all the compliments yeah. i said to you yeah. before yeah. you knew that was true about you but it was something in my delivery or yeah. this moment or yeah. what you came to this podcast with or right after the meditation yeah that allowed you to tap into a deeper feeling mm -hmm. of the truth yeah yeah it's it's and it's like that's it's funny i put on my instagram before um it's like, I just, I want to, and it, it sounds almost narcissistic, but I'm just like, I just want to help everybody enjoy life as much as I do. I feel that way as well. And I don't <laughs> yeah. think that's narcissistic right. at all. Right, right, right. It's just, it's just like, yeah, I just, it's I'm, just I'm, the truth. We just all want everybody to have a good time and be happy and, and be, love life. And it also, because it's also selfish, like we're happier that way too. Yeah. I, whenever everybody is having a good time, it's like, that's, that makes me, again, I'm good. I can handle myself, but also. Let's elevate this experience and let's let's all have a great time because like, it, it is available. And if I can help you get there and I have these gifts and uh, we have a a renewable resource of love, like constantly renewable. That grows as you give it. Exactly. And so I'm just like, it's I'm I'm good. You're not taking anything from me. I am I am at a hundred percent. And it's just giving it out. Yeah. So we're both at a hundred percent of love. What was for you the darkness? Mm. that you've experienced that where where was the furthest from the 100% of love for mm. yourself that you can remember in your mm. I w I would say potentially in challenging relationships mm. whenever there's 
you know, whenever there's there's incompatibility and there's a lot of there's a lot of mistrust in yourself because there is so much back and forth between you and the other person. And again, it's like it's not either of our faults, right? It's kind of it's just like we were all we're both doing the best that we could in that moment and in those moments with each other. And of course, there's there's both things that we could do to to grow and 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 do better but yeah i think it's like whenever you're 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 just operating from a place of scarcity or potentially like walking on eggshells or something or just not being able to live your truth yeah. it's like that is it's 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 funny to flip it on the other side one of the one of my closest friends um with my platonic girlfriends we have this cute little tattoo that we want to end up getting. So it's Amanda Bucci. We, w- we want to get, we want to get one plus one equals three. Mm-hmm. And it's because whenever we hang out with each other, it's like, it's, it's not, it, I feel more like myself whenever I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it, it's just kind of like I, there, there is me and I feel very good within me, like as that one, but then us together creates more, right? There, there's a, there's a, there's a different entity. There's a third entity of us. And it's like, that is whenever I'm with people that I love so much in contrast to what I was just talking about being in difficult relationships where you're in that scarcity mindset and you feel lesser than, and you feel like you're maybe always doing something wrong, or, uh, you know, you're just not maybe super proud of everything, or Mm. you're just, you're, you're, you're doing your best. It's like, what I've now realized is available. It's just like, I can become the most me possible whenever I'm with my favorite people Yes, because there's so much encouragement and there's so much openness and acceptance and love and support of just like, no, that's also what I love about Austin is that there is so much difference and, and different people and it's, it's celebrated and it's like, no, go do that thing that you do, right? Go tell the story in the -the over-the-top, exaggerated, hyperbolized way that you do, but it's going to entertain everybody and it's going to be so fun and you're so good with words or or you're so emotive in how you dance and it's so expressive and um, it's even, it's like even whenever, yeah, I have several girl friends who are very good dancers and it's like they are objectively like sexy dancers, but it's like I see it more as like, Oh, you're doing, this is your gift. Like you are so good at moving your body and expressing yourself and feeling emotive. And I'm just, you just want to cheer them on. And you're like, that's, I, I just, I love when, and now, yeah, now we're getting to something different, but it's like, I love, I love so much when people are into the thing that they are very good at. And maybe, especially whenever they're maybe, especially whenever maybe they haven't had as much encouragement around it. So like with my girlfriend, one of the best things that, uh, so the main thing with her, shout out to Megan. Um, she, she, I, the main compliment that I gave her from the beginning is that she sees me better than anybody that I've ever been with. And that is so powerful and so encouraging to be myself. And like my favorite thing is very specific compliments, especially something that I might be internally proud of but I don't recognize it as much. And so she sees me and she's like, you do this thing and I love it so much. And I'm like, oh fuck, I love that too. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm like, I'm going to lean into that more. Yeah. And that is, it's just like, so many people don't have that. It's all like, you know, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to get ahead. It's like, I love Paul Millard's, his his like, it's more about coming, like getting, coming alive over getting ahead. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think so many people are in this judgment space or status power signaling and ego. And it's just such this convoluted web of, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's so, it's just not a fun way to live. Yeah. It's just not a fun way to live. It's a really fun way to live to see other people clearly, as clearly as you can, but that starts with seeing yourself clearly. Absolutely. And so how can people get better at seeing other people better? Mm. I think. I think, uh, really learning to listen better, I think is huge. Uh, I, I think leading with curiosity, um, and it, it, again, all of this somewhat stems from caring 
Cause right. You have to, you have to actually want to do. And, and that's, that's the tricky part too, is because you need to actually, and I guess you could, both of these things can be true. You can actually care and be interested in them and also know it's like good for you. Cause what I was saying is this can't be a, oh, I want to act like I'm interested in you so that then it feels good for me or something. But no, it's like, you really have to lean in and, and want to learn about other people. And I think a big part of that comes from, yes, one, the working on yourself so that whenever you come across a quote unquote high quality person, that that doesn't feel like a mirror or like some type of threat to you because you're not open to um, basking in their amazingness right? because it makes you feel bad about yourself. Right. And it, so- it, Just like the example of this would be for the podcast, it'd be like, if there's a particular guest that I really look up to, but I don't think of myself as amazing, mm -hmm. then the energy of that exchange is going to be, mm -hmm. it is going to be felt by the audience and the person as exactly. there's something wrong here. There's there's something just like that. The girl knew subconsciously that she was like, I think you're just with me because of this. And it's, I think with, with us, especially who are not good at like lying or, you know, acting out of alignment, like acting out of that alignment. Those subtle things can be, they, they might feel subtle to us, but to the outside, to somebody, especially who knows us or something, they're like, this is not you. And that's where with my girlfriend, Megan, it's like, she, that's the other bit, very big pro and con of, again, it's not, it's, I say con in quotes yeah. because it's like, she can see me. There is no wiggle room for bullshit <laughs> there. And that's, so and, and that's the best though, that's, but that's, that's yes. the best it, that, that is that is the best quality of somebody that you care about that also cares about you because they're going to make you show up in the best way that they know you can. They make you better, like genuinely make you better. And so, yeah, working on yourself and, and being, uh, um, you know, open. And again, it's not like I never have envy or jealousy, at least again, this goes back to the mindfulness meditation training. It's like that can come up and I can, I can be like, Oh, there's the, there's that jealousy again. There's that, there's that envy that's coming up again. I'm going to recognize that I'm doing that thing and I'm going to not crack the whip and say, God, it'd be so much better if you were driving that Ferrari or something, you know? Yeah. It's like, no, like that's cool. I'm, I'm happy for them. I'm going to, I'm going to bring this, this back in towards me. Um, but, but yeah, I think, I, I think starting there and then, uh, the, so the reason why I was saying that is because you might still have these feelings of uh, quote unquote negative emotions that will pop up as you're trying to actively work through this. But I think that's where you can recognize that you're you're doing that thing and gently guide yourself back to the present and and encourage yourself. Hey, I'm this is where an affirmation can come through. It's like I'm actively working on improving my image of myself and and actively understanding that people can have these things and it can make me feel this way and I can still continue on in spite of those feelings. Mm. Right. And that can be, that is where the experience in how you relate to that experience is workable. Again, that's why that's what's so it's a tangible way of noticing those feelings that you constantly have. And then, and then guiding yourself back to the present, guiding your, like understanding that you're having those, like having that alarm go up and be like, Ooh, I'm having those feelings again and bringing it back. And then understanding it's just a thought it's going to go away and keep, keep continuing on. And then also the, the latency period between whenever you have jealousy and then whenever you recognize it, it's just the same as whenever you start spiraling, right? It's like, Ooh, I'm, I have this thought. And then now this, and then this, and then this, and then this, right? And so it's like, over time, the latency period of of when you get jealous and then when you catch it and recognize it and then shift back to a more um, uh, a place of understanding and presence and and love and encouragement, it's like cool. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna continue on from from there. Uh, and I think that that's 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 also huge. And then yeah, the other part. So that's all taking care of yourself. And then now the next part is then being interested in other people. And also, cause you're going to have these quality people around you and now you're okay. You're like, you're, you want to be around these people and leaning into them. I don't know who it was that said it, but like the, 
the way to be interesting is to be interested, Mm -hmm. right? It's like, that's, that's one of the, the biggest, the biggest things. And so leaning into actually making a connection with them and asking them questions and being sincere and, and, and trying to, to learn more about them. Yeah. I think that that's a, that's a good way to start seeing people better. Yeah. It's coming from the place of I'm whole and or working on myself fully yes. as well as I'm interested in you and interested in what you're you're about. And from that place you see others more clearly. And that and you have and also that it's especially like these quote unquote higher quality people, it's like often they want to get to know you. Like they want to if you act genuinely interested and you are respectful and considerate and all these things, it's like how you approach them and you want to deepen the relationship with them. It's like, you can, you can do that. Right. It's like, even with people online, it's, you know, it's like dropping them a message. Like they put out a piece of content you really love it. You drop them a note. Hey, I love that piece of content, giving them a specific compliment or something. And then, you know, you're not asking for anything. And then you do this several months on end, you do little jokes here and there. And now over time, now, of course this can take over time, but also that's what can make relationships so meaningful. Also, one of the, my favorite quotes is like, if uh, um, friendships aren't always worth it, if they're always easy and convenient, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, that's, uh, of course, they're not always easy and convenient. This is relationships. This is being a human. Um, and so it's like, I, I think that, uh, yeah, that's that's super important. Wow, I get yeah, I get fired up about it. It's I amazing. Get, it can be over. Like I can be like, I I love this stuff so much. <laughs> Me too. It's but it takes a lot of brain power to to navigate this meta conversation. Yes, like it could take a lot of energy, but it's also very fulfilling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I very much know exactly how you're thought, you're I feeling. I um, take me through. You mentioned Megan a few times, yeah. and I'd love to dive into that. What exactly did you need to let go and or open up in yourself in order to bring her into your life? Mm. And we can cut anything you want, by the way. No, no, so no. you could get nope. personal if you don't. Or... No, no, no. Um, so with Megan being able to see me very well, I think that I had to be ready to step up to the plate to be my best self within a partnership, Mm. right? Like I had to fully, because I had been in, I I had, so I had to fully be ready. It's like, but I've been in, in other romantic relationships before that with very special women and very incredible women. And, uh, I, but I kept ending things over time before they got very serious. Like they would get somewhat serious and then There would be something and I would cut it off. And so over time, I, you know, after about two years of being single, I I started to somewhat worry. I was like, oh, is this, I'm the common denominator here. Is this me? Like, and I really, like, I really tried to put the mirror on myself constantly because again, if you're insert, you know, that truth is going to help you find the answer and like be better for you. Um, And so I was like, is this just, is this a me problem? Like, am I running from something? Am I not willing to accept these? Like, am I not willing to work through something? But then I, I met, I met Megan and we, uh, went on a went on a couple dates. First date went went pretty well, and then the the second date went because with with her my it's, it's can happen sometimes. The golden retrieverness can be like I it's kind of hard to read. Like, is this like naive optimism? Like, is this um, like what's how much depth is there to this person? To be honest, and I and I fully understand that 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 comes across, and I'm I'm very okay with that um, because as we started to get to know each other better and things. She started to see, we started to have more conversations. We started to get past some of the first, like getting to know you type stuff. And then things started to go really well. And then by the, the third date, um, because I was also seeing someone else at the time, actually much more seriously. And I had gone to go see her, um, this, this other woman, and I had a great time with her. And then I had a date with Megan probably like four days later, and I'd been seeing this other girl for quite some time, like several months, uh, essentially over a year, but off and on throughout the year. So essentially like I've been pretty serious with her and 
very much considering taking it to the next step of, of dating and things. And then I had this third date with Megan. And then I, again, like I said, so this is about four days after having the, the other very good time with the other woman. And I was just like, oh, this is different. I was like, this is, this was not, I'm, I'm feeling I, I, everything just fits. It just meshes so well. And both on the chemistry and the compatibility side of things. And I, again, she was, she was again in a healthy way, like psychoanalyzing me and breaking down things with me so fast. And I was like, oh, this is, cause it's cool to have that, see that emotional intelligence replicated back towards you and used with you and potentially even used against you. Cause we were having some difficult conversations, but again, it was good, good kind of back and forth. Cause she knew about this other woman. And so it's like, we were, we were going through it. And one of the things that she said towards the end of the night that made her worry about being with me was my passiveness. And that is a, something that I had never noticed before, but it is a, thing where I've, I know I've talked to you with, with women in the past. I said, I had a marination process. <laughs> I needed to marinate with these girls. Right. So it's like, <laughs> I, I needed to, I needed to be, and it, it get to me, it's felt very reasonable and it felt, um, you know, smart and safe. And I was, I was taking my time, not trying to rush anything. I needed to have a bunch of different experiences with them in different situations. And I wanted to see how they worked with me, with other people. Whenever different things happen, uh, I needed to collect more data, right? And and also again on the compatibility and the the chemistry side of things. And so whenever she said that I was passive, um, I and then she also was essentially like, "Hey, uh, I really like you. I think you're incredible. I think that we can. Uh, you're super handsome. Uh, I think." Like, <laughs> uh, I think like I think that we could really do something here, but also I'm not interested in uh, you know like you have this other thing going on with this other girl. I'm just I'm just not interested in dealing with that whole situation. Um, uh, so she she didn't really give me an ultimatum, but she was more so like, "Hey, I'm a I, high value person, yeah, and I don't dude, deal with that's this what bullshit. it is." She had so much self respect. She was like, yeah. "I you know again, it, it wasn't in a in a." pushy way or anything like that. She was like, this is how it is. This is how I feel. And I respected that so much. And she said that I was passive and I was, I thought about it and I, I really, I really had to get, this was again, we were face to face. We were right, right with each other at the end of the night about to either kiss her and be together or kiss, like not do anything and be moving, transition into a friendship. Cause we're also in the same friend group. And she said that thing about being passive, passive and things. And that's whenever I reckon I was like, ooh, this, this girl is, she's like calling me out in a helpful way that will allow me to step up and become a better person and potentially be ready for this type of relationship. And again, every, everything else that we said throughout that entire night was, it just hit everything she said, hit over and over and over again. And I was like, yes, that's that's how I would think about it. I was like, that's what I would do. And I also see it that way. And these things, it just all clicked. And yeah. And so she, she was essentially like, you have to make a decision. And I was like, all right, I want to be with you. <laughs> I was like, I want to be with you. And I ended things with the other girl the next day. Wow. What came in, up in your body when, when she said you are passive or she asked you about your, it was, it was, I mean, first it was, it was definitely embarrassment mm. because it's like you want to she, she you want a guy who knows what he wants and i was it, it was also a illuminating moment because i was thinking all of these i think that both of these can be true but it's kind of like i was hiding behind this idea of marination and thinking that i needed all these other situations and i didn't really want to make a decision and I never viewed it as a weakness, right? I viewed it as a strength. I was like, oh, I'm being thoughtful. I'm not rushing into anything. I am being very smart about this whole process. And then whenever she said I was being passive, it was kind of like, oh, you're right. That is one way to look at that thing that's, I've been doing. That's whenever, that's whenever if you're open to that feedback 
And it can be very hard because in that moment, it's like, I really wanted to resist. That's the work. Every, I wanted to resist. I was, str- I was struggling inside, but then I had to sit with it. And then, but I knew, I knew the truth was like, I am being passive. And I was with Megan and I knew that she checked all these boxes and boxes that I didn't even know that I had. And <laughs> not only on paper was the compatibility good, the chemistry was off the charts. She was so fun and made me genuinely laugh very, very hard and made me see things that I I thought I loved her brain. I was just like, this is, this is her, your brain is incredible. And so, and she's obviously absolutely stunning as well. So that's, that's another big thing. And so in that moment, I was like, cool, this is my, this is my moment to, to step up. And I did it. And then I, I felt good about it, but also still had somewhat like, oh, am I, am I going to regret this? Like, am I, am I acting out of people pleasing or am I ap- acting out of whatever else? And so, but then the, I was like, cool. I, I, I felt pretty good about it. I, I sat with it. I could all, I knew I could always change my mind. Like if I really felt that was the right thing to do, I know that I could, but then the next day I was like, I'm going to sleep on it. Woke up the next day, felt even better about it. And then I ended things with the other girl and, and then started to hang out with Megan Moore. And I was like, oh, this is absolutely a no brainer. And then from there, it's just been like, that was, that was a couple months ago and we're moving in together next month Incredible, and just like very much in love. Like she's the most incredible woman I've ever met. <laughs> like genuinely outside my family. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love, I love that she was a part of the process yeah. of you breaking something open for yourself yeah. to help oh. bring her into your life. Dude. Like this wasn't, this wasn't work you did by yourself or with someone else. This was work that happened with her and that she facilitated to help you grow. And that, and that is what great relationships are all about, yeah. right? Again, yeah. one plus one equals three. Yeah. She's making me better. She's making me a better person because of who she is and how, and, and how she's treating me. And it's like, that is what the fuck else do you ask for? Like, I don't know what else they're like, well, that's it. Like, that's the key. Yeah. And in a world where so many are focused on making money or building their business or having a car or being famous on social media. It's like, this is the thing that brings people the most fulfillment. So like, why isn't this the topic of conversation? I know. Right? I agree. I know. I agree. And it's like, okay, if I told you that the reason you're not with the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with or someone who's fulfilling you is because of you, Mm -hmm. it's like- Bro, if so many people spent more, as much time as they did on their businesses as they did their relationships, their life would be incredibly better. You know what Say I'm, that again. You dude. know what I'm saying? Say that again. And again, it's like, I love, I love working. I yes. love, yes. I, I love, I love what I do. I, I love writing. I love creating. I love helping people with their, their fitness and talking to other coaches and things. But it's like, there is so much more. And for me, uh, I know that other people can enjoy business more and they're really dedicated to their duty of that. And I think that that's awesome. I think that it just has to come from a pure place. It has to come from a place of, I genuinely love this and it's not a compensation or it's for ego or it's for this. You're like, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're doing it out of fear. You're doing all these things because then you're you're, you're, you're chasing this thing that you're never going to catch. It's just like, and, and then that's where it's like, okay, what, what are we, what are we doing here? And so I think that by focusing on relationships and things, it can just fill up your cup in, in so many different ways that business necessarily, can, or it's the thing that you're chasing with business can be fulfilled with relationships. Yes. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Yeah, and can. And and the truth is, it's like, just look at the conversation in 2024. Mm-hmm. It's like 95% business it's... and 5% relationships. And maybe that's my algorithm. Maybe that's my, sure. maybe that's no. the people I've surrounded myself with. I get it. And it's also like, let's, let's make that a little more equal. And that's what this podcast is attempting to do right now. I love that. I, I, I just, right. It's like, I do, I think that business is so important. Innovation. Yeah. Capitalism, like we need that shit. We need people yeah. who are useful and do useful things and escalate so many things, but you can do that still in a healthy way. And again, people who are are talking about um, 
not necessarily our homie Zach, but like being obsessed or like having, having, and I think that he uses obsessed and how he talks about it in a sense of like flow and alignment, like perfect alignment and and doing that thing that you love doing. That's where I think it is healthy. Cause it's like, I just want to make sure you're doing what you want to do for the right reasons. Right. It's like, I just want to help people align that and, and, and really feel good about what they're doing and feel happy with what they're doing. What questions can somebody ask to ask themselves if they're on that path of feeling good for the sake of doing something? Yeah, it's it's really it's really hard, man, because for me a big one that comes up is if I were to pay you a billion dollars for you to stop doing what you're doing, would you take it? Mm. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's very good. Because, yeah. and that's how I, that's how I started to, in the past six months, how I've started to invite people onto the podcast. Mm. It's like, if they were given a billion dollars, what would change in their life? The yeah. less that would change in their life, yeah. the better and more likely I would yes. to have them on the show. I, I love that. I think, I think, uh, again, Paul Millard from Pathless Path, he talks about shouldlandia. It's like what turning inwards and considering your inner dialogue and how many times you're thinking, oh, I should be doing this or I should be doing that or kind of just like, oh, I, or I wish I was doing this or I would love to do this more. It's kind of like, that is your compass. It's kind of like, I I understand maybe you're not able to just completely switch gears from doing your corporate corporate job to then traveling all the time or, or doing whatever, but it's like, you can take whatever the first step is to make that transition to go over into that that other direction and making that game plan or or something like that and so i think it's turning into your internal dialogue and how much shoulds you have or i or even like i want to do this but i can't because obviously because of x y and z right it's like okay or what if you could yeah. and what if you could do this this and this and i think that and what if it would work out great and i i think that that's i think that that's awesome and then also as you are going throughout your day it's like how much energy is this giving you how how good are you with setting boundaries within yourself and with with other people and what is really firing you up and it's it's funny cuz that's like with this podcast so Megan and I had an amazing date night last night and we stayed up very late and uh, I knew that I had this, this podcast is the first thing that I've done today. <laughs> it's 3 PM. Um, and so it's like, this is the first thing that I had done today. And, but I knew, uh, cause I, I woke up and I was, I was feeling a little tired and things. And I was like, Oh, I've got, I was like, I've got that pod with Danny, just like wanting to make sure that I show up and, and feel good. But I was like, Oh no, I knew. And so I was like, this is going to give me so much energy. Yeah. This is going to, because I want to do this and I love you. And I knew that I'm going to come out of this feeling better than whenever I went in. Right. It's kind of like more, more of that. It's kind of just like whenever I'm doing these things, what is really, what's really firing me up? Like what, like following that and being open to that really good feeling. And now of course you might not know what that is. You might have to try some things or whatever, but I think getting very curious about everything that's happening internally is so many, uh, it's like what Mark Manson said, negative emotions are a call to action. It's mm-hmm. kind of like all these, these you're getting signs, you're getting signals all day long. You're, you're, you're getting these things. And so it's just fine tuning everything and, and turning inward and listening. And then again, everything else that we talked about being accepted, like accepting, being open to hearing these things and changing is, is, is hard, but it's worth it. Yeah. And it starts from like fixing, I believe your corporate job to living a life that you're proud of, that is, is fully in alignment, Mm -hmm. starts with feeling more joy on a day-to-day basis Mm -hmm. and living in a state of love for yourself. Because if you really loved yourself at a deep, deep level, would you accept not liking your life half your time? For sure. You wouldn't. For sure. So how can you live in that state of love when you're not working so that you can get used to the feeling of every moment is amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think so. I think it's like, yeah, you just, you, what would be helpful in this moment? It's just kind of like, what would be, what is the next best step? I put this on my story the other day. It's like so many times throughout the day, I need to, I have to kind of recenter myself and I have to uh, make sure that I'm 
focusing on what I need to focus as far as like the highest priority thing and just kind of recentering myself and refocusing and then also self-regulating myself and emotionally regulating everything that's going on because I can have very heavy concepts that I work with people as their coach and even just in interpersonal relationships with my friends and things. It's like some of my friends can be going through stuff and that can take a lot out of me. And so I, but I have to take care of my side of the street and I have to take care of me. Um, and so I think it's, I think it is really leaning into all the things that you, you know, you should be doing. Like, that's probably a very good, if you're not sure what the next step would be, it's kind of like cleaning up your diet, going to exercise, getting outside, potentially being on your phone less, meditating, co- meditating, calling your friends, uh, you know, all, all socializing with people. It's kind of like all these little core value things and just even picking one in each of the buckets and, and trying to orient your life and how to include more of those things. And then also listening as you you go throughout those activities and, and feel into what feels good, what doesn't feel good. Um, and, and, and also working with yourself throughout the entire day, if you do have these feelings of shame or regret or thinking about the past or fearing the future or anxiety or all these things, again, working from a place of encouragement and love, because because I think whenever people might hear you say like acting from a place of, it can feel like such a big leap from where they are now, if they are potentially pessimistic or something, it's just like, it's not... It feels like such a big shift and also like that can feel scary and bring up so many other emotions. And so they can just discredit, discount that at all. Right. And just thinking, you know, Danny's just hardwired this way. Matt's just hardwired this way and things. And I, I understand that our baselines can be different, but it goes back to what I said about understanding that this, your experience can be workable within those moments of... I'm feeling shame or I'm always do this, I, it, catching yourself in those and then trying to gently guide yourself back to, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing that thing again. This is not serving me. It's not helping me. I care about myself. I love myself. So because I love myself and care about myself, I'm going to choose to do this instead. I'm going to act differently. I'm going to catch myself and I typically will emotionally shut down in this moment and then retreat and not take care of myself. And I'll turn to substances and I'll try and numb everything instead of, oh no, I, you know, I've, I've, I want to feel better. I want to, I do care about myself. I want to improve my life. So I'm going to go to the gym or go for a walk instead of numbing myself with alcohol or something. Right. And so it's like in those moments, you have choices you have choices throughout the entire day over and over and over and over again. And that's the thing is, it's my favorite concept from Sam Harris with the waking up app. It's the concept of beginning again, right? It's like you always, there. you don't, this is a big thing in, in fitness and nutrition as well because people are like, oh, I'll start my diet on Monday. And I'm like, you have to understand that every moment is that new Monday, right? Every moment is a fresh slate for you to begin again. And I use the concept in the gym. You can be in the middle of a a crappy workout. You can be going through the motions. You can be, the music's not hitting, or maybe you're just in a bad mood and the, you're feeling weak or whatever it is. It's like in that next moment, you have the power to realign yourself, reorient yourself. And that next set you do in the gym of bench press, that one set of 10 could be the most intentional, focused, like the best set that you've ever done in your entire life. Not in terms of performance. I'm not saying that you can be the strongest you've ever been. I'm saying that everything that is within your control and power within that moment, you have the ability to believe that and then act aligned with that. And so you take that concept and you can do that with anything. And I think that that, whenever you realize that you can have that power within your mind, it's like, then you, you have a playground in life. You can do whatever you want, or at least you can, you can do your best in doing whatever you want. Matt McLeod, I think (laughs) that is a wonderful place to bring this podcast home. Amazing. I mean, didn't 
like I had high expectations for this. This was incredible. <laughs> felt great, but this yeah. is, I, I knew this is how it would go because we always do this. This is we, what we do at we, the gym. We, bro, we've, <laughs> we've, we've done hundreds of podcasts. We, we cry at the gym together too. It <laughs> legit happens. Yeah, of Legit course. happens. No, but this, I knew this is how it would go and you're amazing. Yeah, so thank you. I appreciate you. Um, if people are interested in this men's group that we're doing, mm. send me a DM, Please. EQ. Yes. I'm very much looking forward to that. Yeah the make sure the first two letters of the message are eq so it pops up in the inbox where else should we send people to connect with matt mcleod um so my i'm most active on instagram so it's matt mcleod six m-a-t-t-m-c-l-e-o-d six uh it's the same on twitter as well and i'm not as active on twitter but i still like to dabble a little bit and and then my website is mattmcleod.org i like to write blog posts and I'm also very active on my email list. And so you can sign up for that on my website or through my Instagram, the link in my bio. But I would honestly like, please send me a message. Just send me a message and let's talk. And I want to know what resonated with you guys. Uh, I, I love talking to to more people about this. I know you have an incredible audience. So yeah, I'm always open for conversations. Love that. So grateful for you and such an incredible writer you are. I know that didn't get captured in this episode, but oh, thank you, please man. go check out his writing. Thank I always learn something from it. So thank you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you and I love you. I love you too.